Hello and welcome to In the Light, Growing Your Soul with me, Anna Isabel, and I am a psychological astrologer as well as an analytical hypnotherapist. And so today I'm delighted to be speaking with Oliver Rolf. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Anna. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I, it's, 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 it seems quite opportune in many ways because um, I'm sure that viewers are noticing that there's a slight nasal tone <laughs> to my voice. I am recovering from flu um, at the moment. And why it's interesting that I'm speaking to you now is because your book is called The Holistic Guide to Your Health and Well-Being Today. So I think when it's how to describe your book, I think what I would say is that it is comprehensive and it covers so many aspects of our well-being and I think the it begins with looking at the immune system which is why I think it's somewhat opportune for me to be talking to you today <laughs> absolutely um, so maybe let's begin there let's talk about the immune system because I think my observation is that people have forgotten that they have an immune system. It mm -hmm. seems people are so reliant now on somebody else telling them mm -hmm. how to um, get over a cold, etc., that mm -hmm. they've forgotten that actually our bodies are designed to deal with viruses. They're designed to deal with bacteria, etc. So let's talk about the immune system. Do you know, I, I, I'll go even one step further to a degree. If you think about how people have maybe forgotten that they have an immune system, and I would almost say they've, they've lost connection with themselves. Um, and I, this is, for me, the whole point of the book really is self-awareness. If, if I can put it down to one thing, it is self-awareness and self-understanding because health and well-being is, is not a one-size-fits-all. It just isn't. You know, there is... There, there are some things that are right for you that just wouldn't be right for me, invariably. And throughout my own um, understanding and experiences, uh, of which I've had a fair few, uh, which really led me to where I am today in many respects, uh, I think you, we as a, as a race need to tap into ourselves more importantly, spend time with ourselves, listen to ourselves, understand ourselves, and therefore understand our own immune system. So. You know, the immune system, you can talk about the white blood cells and red blood cells and, and all the different counts. And then you, you suddenly lose people along the way um, and you go, oh, it's too much. I, I just, you know, what what can help me? And, you know, the holistic guide to your health and well-being today, I'm, I'm desperately proud of. Um, I'm very, very pleased that it's been well received. And those that have read it and reviewed it have have pos positively connected with it in the in what I would say is the right way because it's not a book that you read A to Z and then you put it down and, and you you forget about it forever it's it's something to well as I said I've got it literally in front of me it's something to have near you at all times um, where you can read it and I've got my little notes in here as well so it you know for me it's it's something which I use a lot and I enjoy using it because whilst I put it together and, and wrote the book Actually, I wrote the book with four other um, very um, well-renowned professionals as well. It is, it's something that there's so much information and so much detail across every different element, whether it is the immune system, whether it is um, the right foods that I should be looking at, or the foods that, that are immune-boosting foods, which I thought was an important element. So whether you're looking at, and even, even questioning the, the, the foods at the same time, because I put in uh, salmon, for example, which is a very, very strong and booster for the um, for the body, whether it's omega threes or the nutrients inside. However, there is an element that you have to be wary of where the salmon's from, if there's pollutants in it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's not about being blinded by uh, a fact in many respects. It's about looking at it and assessing it and looking at both sides. And in fact, I had a conversation today with someone um, talking about their their career and their life, and I said the important thing realistically is. You know, you could you could have an argument for anything, whatever it might be, and you can look at one side and you can bang that that argument home. But unless you look at the whole, you're not really gaining anything. You know, for me, I think it's so important to look at both sides of an equation 
or both sides of a story or both sides of a, of a recommendation or even let's say both sides of a fact because a fact today and, and you know this could well be even in my book a fact today that we might say you know we need this in our life but in 50 years time we might find out it's you know it's completely different and we've understood our bodies in a greater element but I think with this I don't give I don't give pushy advice. It's not like I've done this, you must do that. As I said, there are so many things and so many elements, shall we say, that one can do to help themselves. And that may well start by, well, really the immune system is, is the, the physical element that we want to look after. But for me, it's, it's the physical, it's the mental, it's the energetic, and it's the emotional. And, you know, whilst I've been through a huge amount of experiences, the past decade plus for me has been a huge change where I slipped one disc in my back one disc went to seven discs seven discs turned into a spinal um, disease diagnosis uh, and for me I was hugely sporty uh, I was playing soccer and football the whole time um, and then suddenly that was taken away from me which I think will always happen in in life when you get to an age you're not able to do the sports that either the level you could do or whatever it might be and there's a change and there's a shift in your in your mentality, a shift in your life, a shift in your focus, I think importantly. And I went down and I've always been connected to the spiritual world anyway, but I sat with um, spiritual circles, meditation circles, and it just gave me such a, a lovely balance to find out of who I really am for myself and to, to connect and, and to understand the subconscious importantly, because I feel the subconscious is so forgotten in our in our world amazingly because that is that is the deep you <laughs> which you really should connect to and you should know and this is why when I said right at the beginning about what is the book about it is about that self-awareness it's understand even when I talk about uh, Malcolm Gladwell um, and his book Blink and Blink is very much a case of well, I say one, seeing is believing, but two, understanding your gut reaction, your gut feel and what that means in that moment. Because a gut reaction, like a um, like a, a moment in body language, is all about that specific moment. And if you can capture why you are feeling, uh, and some people will feel it, in, especially in here, you know, knotted or frustrated or, you know, you're offish or, or, or something's not right, your body's telling you or giving you signals um, to highlight there's a problem or there's something you must focus on, which is why if you don't listen to your subconscious, it will bring out different elements and it will slow you down if you're not slowing yourself down, for example. So I know I've gone on for a little bit. There's so much detail in there that, that you can encapsulate on. Absolutely. And, and that's because what you're saying in a nutshell is your body and your health, your physical health, if we're talking about how to care for the immune system, it begins not necessarily where you think it begins. There are many factors which impact on this physical side of ours, which beginning which is our emotional well-being, which is what brings us to the subconscious. And as an analytical hypnotherapist, this is a conversation that I'm having on a daily basis um, with clients. Um, yesterday, I was working with a young woman and she asked me, well, what does it mean to listen to myself? You know, and, and I thought, yeah, what does it mean? So let's get back to that basic thing, which is how do you feel? Absolutely. How do you feel? Does, it, does, it, does this situation feel right to you? Mm -hmm. You like it, don't you like it? And that's a conversation I have a lot with clients because it seems that many of us have become disconnected from ourselves at a feeling level. And when we're talking about listening to the subconscious, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. It's that thing that you feel in your gut right there that says, I don't like this, or I really like this. I really need to do this. I really want to do this. Mm -hmm. And if we don't understand what's what's driving that then we're a bit lost because we repress it um, and repressing is not a good thing irrespective of whether the impulse is a positive one that's 
that's going to be beneficial or a negative one that's going to be, um, well, less beneficial, if we can put it like that. Um, if we still need to understand what that impulse is rather than suppressing. So mm -hmm. if, it's, if you've got an impulse that is somewhat destructive, where is it coming from? What, what is it that you're feeling? Is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it fear? What is it? Let's understand what that is rather than suppressing it. And equally, if your heart is screaming for some ballet lessons, it doesn't matter that, you know, you're 90. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, what yeah. is it you're yearning for? And if you yeah. can't, because physically that's not possible, what is it that ballet means to you? Maybe, yes. you're, maybe you're yearning for something beautiful and graceful. And how can we how can we give you that if it's not through ballet lessons necessarily? Um, so it's it's being able to to do that, and that's what helps us um, mm. to recover when we encounter bugs or resist them or whatever it is. It's that it's that that strength that is really about joy and in inside, isn't it? I completely agree with what you said about feeling. Um, it's something I talk about a lot. It's about how I feel and connecting to that feeling of, of, of you, whatever that is, that, that deep connection to yourself. And, you know, we, we do live in a world that it, there's so much going on. There's technology, your jobs, obviously, that the world's in a pretty difficult place. Forgetting the uh, element of, COVID as well, adding that into it at the same time, which I still believe we're coming through. Genuinely, I think we haven't even reached the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the effects of COVID and what it's done. I think probably to everyone individualistically, um, but also uh, as a collective, I think we've all changed. I think the world has, has, has taken a big step forward in technology, but I think it's harmed us in a lot of different ways. And we've been certainly disconnected now, you know, I think one thing we've all felt and talking about feeling is uh, when we're not sitting with each other on a face-to-face uh, -face or a physical basis, we're missing an energetic uh, force between the two people. And when you sit down with someone, you can genuinely feel them and you can feel their energy. And this is what I talk about in, in the Holistic Guide to Health and Wellbeing today with the chakras. People go, oh, the chakras are a bit out there. It's a bit you know, it's a bit woo woo. And I don't know. And I was like, okay, well, let's, let's break it down. But your brain is a, is a hotbed of electrical activity. Um, without electricity, your heart wouldn't be working. MRIs and ESGs are there to measure electrical activity in our body. So we know that there's electricity in our body, that we know there's energy in our body. It's, it's fact that you can't get away from that. And what the chakras are, and I, I've looked at a lot of different research from this, but invariably energy transducers or, or subtle energy transducers. And it's that subtle energy that when you're with someone, and this is what we talk about the auras, um, that is the aura. It's the energy around you that you give off. So um, if someone were to walk in, into a room and everyone goes, oh, my God, it's like, you know, they're shining and they're glowing and, and you know, they're, they're walking gracefully, whatever it might be. It's that element that's around you. It's the energy that you're giving off from the inside out. And these are the things that the more we understand, the more that you can start to connect yourself because if your energy is off, it can physically affect you. So, you know, talk about going uh, sleep, for example. Sleep's a very good example. So the penile gland is a, is a, um, tr a transducer for mag uh, magnetic energy, light and temperature. Now, with sleep, we know that, well, I think, for off the top of my head, it's 15.6 degrees um, Celsius to 19.2 degrees, I think it is, that you want to sleep at. It's very specific numbers, but it's quite cool. So you think, well, why does being in a cool room help me? Well, your penile gland is the one that basically controls your circadian rhythms, your sleep patterns, your sleep cycles. So being in a cool room gives you, well, it lowers your... Um, your heart rate as well so you can sleep deeper and more relaxed um darkened room make sure it's pitch black being in the darkest room possible i used to hate that absolutely love it now i find it comforting and and warming and, and fantastic and also being in a silent room and uh, not having a disturbed sleep it's not that easy to sleep properly <laughs> if you think about it because even before that 
and you talk about um, screen time and, and the blue lights from screen or even actually the, the red, green and blue lights from screen. If you're using a screen late at night, it is acting like the sun and therefore you're not getting tired. And I think everyone's done it and I've certainly done it in my life where I've been watching someone, something at 11.30 at night thinking, oh, maybe another half an hour. You know, it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. And the next thing you look at your watch or it's like 1.30, 2.30 in the morning and you don't feel tired, but you just, you're so engrossed. And the reason that happens is because of the penile gland and the circadian ry rhythm being distracted. And therefore it restarts every time your the light hits your, your penile gland. So, you know, all of these elements come together uh, effectively. And it is, it's something that goes back to, basics really and the reason why i think we're lazy first and foremost we're, we're just become wildly lazy as a generation um, or even as as a people let alone as a generation um, our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter you know reading a book to most people seems alien and daunting and you kind of go that's terrifying um and thank god i wrote this book in very short pieces so it's easier to digest on the basis that i think people find it hard to read real long paragraphs and chapters these days and i think we are we are going down into a route where i know that one of the factors that we'll do we're, we're going to break down or i'm going to break down the book and create videos from it as well and you think okay well what does that do what's that what's that what's the aim what's the purpose and realistically, it's connection. It goes back to the same thing. We're all do, always doing the same thing. Self-awareness and connection to others. That's basically what most of life is. You know, if you break it down to the absolute basics of how we enjoy our lives, it's self-awareness and connection of others. If you didn't have all this other, let's say, stuff around us, which we all enjoy and the fantastic comforts, and we're probably the most comfortable people ever, um, it really boils down to keeping life as simple as possible, eating simply. And I, I'm a big fan of red wine, for example. So I go against the grain occasionally and go, oh, how can you be healthy and have red wine? Well, there's actually a lot of nutrients in red wine. There's shows to be a lot of positives. You can have what you want in life. You can have what you want in a diet, but just be aware of what you're putting into your system is right for you. And I talk about foods in particular. My, my version of, a, of anything to do with foods is the middle layer or the, or the middle rows in any supermarket that are effectively um, the cakes, the sweets, the biscuits, just miss the whole thing. Anything that doesn't go off, just forget about it. You shouldn't be having sugar. Sugar is the one, sugar is probably one of the biggest addictions globally, but everyone goes, it's fine. And the same as alcohol. Alcohol is also an addiction for most people, probably because of the sugars as much as the alcohol. But it's fine because it's legalized. And obviously there is a, a further addiction to alcohol, which fortunately my family have been around. So I understand it uh, certainly to a degree anyway. But these things are always there to, they're always there and they're always in vision. But knowing what's right for you, knowing what's right for your gut and your, your gut terrain, which is the important fact that your gut is, is a hotbed and uh, of uh, pharmaceutical activity for your own body. And the more good nutrients and good stuff you're putting into it, the better it is and the better it can look after your whole. So as I said, there's so many factors to look at. There really is, Emma. Always. And I guess, so your, your book has got, as you say, lots of different sections. So it's very easy to read. So there's the, the physical side, there's the um, emotional, mental health side, um, and you talk about the chakras, which is, you know, the spiritual side. I'll tell you the, the part that surprised me. Can you, I, you might guess what it is, but it surprised me that there's a whole section on numerology in a book to do with health and well-being. Mm -hmm. So tell us about why that's there. Great question. Absolutely great question. Realistically, it comes back to self-awareness. So numerology is a phenomenal tool of self-awareness. And um, as I mentioned, when I was going through my changes, I looked at so many different angles to try and understand myself better. And in life, I've often seen a lot of number patterns, a lot of um, mirrored numbers, 111s, 222s, 333s. And it happens so much 
it got to a point where I was like, I need to look into this. I need to understand what these numbers are. Because actually what happened was once I understood what the meaning of behind the numbers were, and there are many ways that you can you can go into the meanings, but the bottom line with numerology and numbers in particular is that Pythagoras, the great Pythagoras, the great mathemat mathematician Pythagoras, created modern numerology. And Pythagoras, in effect, felt and came back to a feeling, but he understood that each number had a personality, a vibration. And when you boil anything down in, in this planet, it boils down to a number. Everything in this planet boils down to a number, whether it's the com computer codes that you see. Um, in fact, the matrix was, was a perfect um, element of what you're looking at when you're looking at life. We are a form of numbers, no matter what you're looking at. So numerology invariably gives you the uh, blueprint of one's life and why you're here, your lessons to learn, the personalities um, that you've brought with you on this journey, the um, the desires and the wants that you have. And once I went through this in particular and, and my, through my own journey, and again, um, I, I did the same journey when I was writing the book. So I wanted to be absolutely sure that it was right to put in there because it is a little out there um, to put in a book about anything. But I think there is a genuine connection to numbers and a genuine understanding behind that there is something there. And once I looked into numerology, once I went through the process again, everything for me just came through. And the more and more I've spoken to people about numerology, the more I've connected them to numerology. And actually, you know, I've, I've done many a charts for people as well. Um, it is amazing how close it is to people currently. And then when you show them their, I said their wants, their needs, their life path, their lessons invariably, I think something clicks to a point and you, there's, a, there's an element of calmness. If you, if you had an opportunity to be given a roadmap of your life and the reason why you're here or reasons why you're here, maybe this, let's say this isn't the complete reason maybe let's say there's there's plenty of other reasons but this gives you a pretty decent proportion maybe 70 80 percent of the reason you're here the personality traits that you've got uh, the ambitions you've got your heart's desire um your achievements desire as well you take that you would take that all day long to have further knowledge of the reason you're here of the wants of your self-awareness going back to what we we're saying if you're if you're disconnected numerology can really automatically put you on the right path back to where you should be and that's why I just felt it is it's such a wonderful self-help tool and it's not you know it's not using astrology it's not using anything what I would say is questionable to a degree I actually think numerology is very specific and once you're very specific within numerology you actually get a lot more detail which is what people miss when you look at the the 12 new um, uh, astrology charts and go hold on there's 7 billion people in the world there's 12 num there's 12 different things how can I just be one well the answer is you're not but the more specific you get the better it is which is what numerology is absolutely and it is just phenomenal it, it, it's amazing how accurate it is and it's amazing to see the change in people when 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 they've discovered something completely new and different and this is what we're talking about is it is being aware being aware not only of self but also what's around you what's what's available to you and i think exactly. that's that's and the point i think as an astrologer myself mm. um this is the beauty of to these two arts is that it's their mirrors into the self and wonderful for self-understanding, but also it's an understanding that we are connected to something bigger than ourselves. And, you know, you were talking about Pythagoras, but of course, Pythagoras and the, the numbers and understanding numbers have energy has play, plays a huge part in astrology as well, because it's, it's the way you, the the angles that are formed between planets that are important and that relates to geometry it's it's sacred geometry in action as well so there are these different elements that are very magical and which remind us that 
we are not alone as as a species we're not alone because the, this this planet is teeming with life um but in the universe we're not alone that there's more to what meets the eye and i think coming back to the importance um of this for wellness is that when you have that understanding that you are a part of something beautiful and large then life has meaning and and that is a crucial part of mental health and spiritual health and of course then physical health <laughs> absolutely i think you know the the element of further life is so important um i don't know about you but i spend if i had a choice i would spend my time looking at the stars and watching tv it's just something which i i'm fascinated of i've seen quite a lot of amazing things looking at the sky which is why stephen hawkins said before he passed away look up and um i love that it's just so simple but actually there is so much to see and i'm i'm based in london and you know the lights unfortunately kill a lot of the night sky so you miss that that real richness and and depth of this of the sky and what's what's out there and you're talking about billions of stars and galaxies you know it you know i i would feel it would be irresponsible to think anything other than there there is life you know how i, I don't know how naive how arrogant you know is that to go we're the only ones you know categorically there is further life um and you know spiritual elements can take you into different species and uh so many different um elements and and look, the earth is a very different planet i think everyone seems to understand that by now when you get to a certain age i actually you know in talking about uh the, the awareness and everyone talks about midlife crisis i'm very much aware that it's not a midlife crisis and i'd love to to change the narrative it's a midlife awakening so what we're going through is a midlife awakening when we hit this point because if you actually have a look at the chakra system and and the book does detail it quite nicely um it's a seven year cycle of our chakras so seven cycles there is a base i think 42 in particular you're when the sixth um, chakra opens the third eye invariably you're connected to well, you can see put it that way and when your third eye opens you can see for the first time you understand what you're here for you understand that there is more you understand that you're just part of a of a, of a far greater element that you either believe in or you don't believe in for want of of better words and some people and i know specifically just don't believe you know you're born you'll die that's it and on to the next path and you know what that is a lot of people's journey some people have been um well from what i understand reincarnated multiple times and are further along their evolutionary chain in the spiritual element and are here to therefore guide and help others who might be early on their their path but there is always um, a huge amount to learn life is about learning and like, going through my experiences uh, and if i were to do long story short if you've heard my back situation you've heard the uh, i think if I might have mentioned it but i had 45 operations between the age of 6 and 16 um my parents were divorced which i think happens in a lot of western world um but the, the knock on effect to the divorce um it basically led to my brother being in uh, rehab my sister um being uh, anorexic and bulimic uh, my father actually had two nervous breakdowns as well and you kind of encompass that and you go through a lot of those elements and you go okay hold on that's that's quite a lot to take in especially at a young age but i i remember through every single one of those experiences actually a lot of operations in particular i never really felt it was just about me i always felt that the experiences that i've been through whether it's my back and my spinal injuries and whatever it might be i've just felt that i i'm here to learn for others and i think that's what the whole thing's about we're a collective we are our own collective consciousness and if we don't put this together and we don't put our thoughts together we don't put our experiences together we don't even talk about our experience most of the time people hear my experiences and like i'm i'm shocked you're even saying it out loud i'm like why this is what happens this is part of life and 
I lived this part and I'm not wounded by what happened in the past. You know, I had bad relationships, which I'm now completely mended with, pre, you know, and, and happy to connect with the, the people again. Because if you don't, if you don't go through these experiences and can come out and it be a positive in any light, whatever that might be, then you've missed the whole point. You've missed the experience because the experience is twofold. If there's something bad that's happened to you, there's a lesson to learn. If you can learn a lesson out of something that's bad, then there's only positive. If something good happens, you know that there's always the opportunity for the opposite to happen. And to be aware of that means you've got more of a whole. So therefore, if you look, look at life on a positive basis and know that, yes, look, you are going to die. There is no question about it. At some point, it is going to happen. But it's how you live your life and how you want to live your life that is so key inside. Because how we, how we feel and how we, how we are and how we genuinely view life is all in your mind. And if you view life or, or think, I say think positively, it sounds very easy, but it has to be a trained and actual factual situation where you go, do you know what, life's pretty good. You know, sun shining, I can smell the grass, beautiful flowers, I live in London, I'm speaking to Anna, you know, this is good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with life. In fact, I'm very happy with life. That is something which you create. Everything in life is something you create. We are the creators of our own destinies. There is no question. Yes, there can be disasters. We know this. Yes, there can be things that are completely outside of our control. But that, those that are inside of your control, you are 100% personally responsible for. So if you want your life to be in a way, or it's in a way that you're currently not happy with, then you're the one that's going to make the change. And the change doesn't happen, have to happen overnight. But the change can happen over a period of time. But the important thing is, is be kind to yourself. Because I've been in situations where I really haven't been. And I beat myself up to, uh, that I was in a situation. Actually, it doesn't help. It just harms your confidence. And actually, if you just go, do you know what? It's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to, for something bad to happen. It's okay to get something wrong. In life, you're going to get something wrong. If you haven't got something wrong, then you haven't learned. Or you haven't done. And the more you do, the more you will learn and the more you'll progress and the more you'll feel comfortable within yourself. Because it's when you make all those mistakes and you forgive yourself and hopefully other people as well, you can breathe and go, okay, well, look, this is life. And whatever you say or do is completely up to you. I'm not going to let it affect me. It's your life. You live it how you want to. As long as I can live it how I want to. Indeed. And, and I think that's the the key well one of the many keys that we were talking about um it's it's understanding that we have a part to play and that self-awareness and understanding are the route by which we can live the most fulfilling lives and coming back to health um that's what makes this a, a book that's about holistic health is because we're we're looking at how to build that health from the inside. So I think at this point, just to remind everyone that the book that we are discussing is called The Holistic Guide to Your Health and Wellbeing Today. And Oliver, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, and it's been a genuine pleasure speaking to you. I hope you're feeling 100% better, especially after this conversation. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And I think it would be good if people knew how to find you. How do, how do they do that? There's a number of ways. So uh, LinkedIn's a great way. Um, I've got a, a strong following there. So you can catch me on LinkedIn if you type in Oliver Rolf on, uh, on the search bar. Um, you can also email me at um, info at Spartan, S-P-A-R-T-A-N hyphen E-X-E-C dot com. And uh, should you want to give us a call, you're more than welcome to call the office line, which is 0044-0203-5070. So what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description box to the LinkedIn um, side of things, okay. as well as your email and your phone number in the description box as well. Thank you so much for your time once again.
Thank you, Anna. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. Next time, we're going to be looking at how to deal with the loss of a child. Until then, goodbye. Bye-bye.